it's really like to be a foster parent, and six truths from the inner circle that may help you on your foster care journey. As a foster parent for 14 years, we've seen a few things. One is that foster parenting, it's kind of demonized. It's not looked at, it's ignored, um, it's kind of disdained even. Or the other is that foster parents are looked at as if they were saints, like they were perfect subhuman beings that had miraculous powers to care for foster children. But the truth is it's really neither. Foster parents are just like anyone else, they're average people, average citizens who just want to care and love and help kids in their community. We don't hear a lot from foster parents, I think for a couple of reasons. One is that we don't want to get in trouble. We don't want to be reprimanded or lose our license from the state or the private agency that we work with. We don't want to lose the foster kids that are in our home. A lot of times we've heard stories of where other foster parents have said or done the wrong thing and the state or the agency has removed the foster children that are presently under their care. And honestly, we love these kids and that terrifies us. And lastly, the truth is, a lot of times foster parents, they're just exhausted. They deal with a lot with their kids and the state and the um, agencies and the ther therapists and um, they're just busy and they're tired and they just don't have time to sit around and do a YouTube video like this one to share their personal experiences. However, I'm going to do that for you today. I'm going to share six truths of what foster parenting is really like from someone who's foster parented since 2006. Six. And at the end, I'm going to share my final thoughts. So make sure to stick around till the end. So when we were licensed in 2006, the truth is there wasn't really a roadmap. We didn't know a lot of foster families. In fact, I don't know that we knew any. Okay, maybe one, but that was it. There weren't blogs. There weren't tons of books like there is nowadays. There wasn't support groups. We just really had no way to go. We were navigating a system and a situation that really seemed dark and bleak, and we were just trying to find our way in the dark to do something good for the sake of kids that were in foster care. And the truth is I was real idealistic about what I thought foster care was. I thought I had come from a, a long experience since I was 11 years old of taking care of children. I took care of infants. I taught Sunday school. I was a, a teacher for seven years. Um, I thought I had known everything there was about kids and care and being able to foster and love them well. And I thought just love would fix these kids and that um, it would be a great and wonderful and successful and happy experience. But I did learn a few things along the way as a foster parent. So today I'm going to share those things with you. Six truths about what foster care is really like from the inner circle. Hopefully these will help you. Truth number one is that foster care, it can really feel a little lonely at times. If you haven't seen my video about foster care when family and friends disapprove and what that can be like, I will add that in the comments below. Make sure that you watch it. And the truth is that even if we do have family and friends that support us, a lot of times they just don't understand. They're not living in our homes. They haven't heard the backstory of these kids. They aren't working with the social workers and the therapists and the schools and dealing with the situations that we actually are. And you know that saying, what does it say? You really don't know a situation until you've walked in someone's shoes. That is really true of foster care. At the same time, we do know a lot of foster parents now, at the, but a lot of times those foster families, they have different situations. So we may even foster the same age kids or have the same social workers, but the truth is their story and their narrative of their foster journey can look completely different than ours. And so like any ministry or calling or maybe a business that you run, when you are doing something that's unique and outside of the norm, that can feel a little lonely. And so that's not something to be afraid of. That's not something that even is necessarily bad because it can make you press into who you are. It can make you lean on God. It can make you uh, fight in a way that maybe you wouldn't if you had a lot of support or people around you cheering you on. It can make you realize the motives of why you are a foster parent. And so loneliness at times, it can actually work for good and it can actually be a good thing. But the truth is foster care, it can feel at times a little lonely. 
Number two truth is that as a foster parent, it can feel like you are in the middle of a war zone. It can feel like you're being pulled in every direction. You want to support those birth parents. That's why you're a foster parent. You are for 110% reunification, but at the same time, you are 110% for the protection and the keeping safe of a child. And so there can be these um, two different ideas that are pulling you in different directions. You can be for a certain case and a certain plan, but at the same time, you can maybe be for the birth parents and that plan looks a little different and so you feel torn. You have these alliances and these um, purposes as a foster parent and it can feel like you are right in the middle and there's really nowhere to go. You can have cases change from moment to moment. It can go to adoption, and then the next moment it can go to reunification, and then the case can go back to adoption, or at the last minute you're getting ready to adopt, or that child is getting ready to move to a permanent adoptive home, and you've worked really hard to get that child bonded with that future adoptive parent, and then out of the blue, a birth relative comes out of the scene, and so you feel torn. You need to support that relative placement, but at the same time you've been supporting this adoptive placement. And so it can feel like a battle zone. And in the middle of that battle zone, it is an excellent time to really just get on your knees because there is someone who has won the war and we can lean on him most of all when we are in the middle of cases or situations that we don't fully understand. And so yes, foster parenting, it can feel a little like a war zone. Number three is that being a foster parenting it can feel heartbreaking. This is probably something you already could have guessed. It's probably the reason maybe why you're even hesitant to take a placement or to be a foster parenting. If you haven't seen my number one myth, I could never let them go. It's the video. I will also add that in the comments below. Make sure to watch it because there is a myth that we cannot get through this foster care journey and still remain whole. And that is just wrong because although foster care, it is heartbreaking. We have kids that return home or kids that maybe re return home and then they get abused again or you see situations that are horrific and you feel powerless and you don't know where to go or what to do or what to say. You can be in the middle of a case and the judge can make a decision that you know is the wrong decision and you could feel like you just want to crumble or scream or run away and there's really nothing that you can do. Foster care it can feel heartbreaking, it can feel powerless, but at the same time when we are weak, there is someone that is greater than us and he is strong and he will empower and he will equip us to do what we are called to do. And so we can get through this, we can be stronger at the end than when we started and we can lean on the strength that we didn't even know that we had when we become foster parents and we say yes, even to the heartbreak. Number four is that foster parenting, it requires grit. It requires something inside you that you never even knew that you had. I also did a video about grit and I don't even know which one it is. If I find it, I'll try to link it below. Um, if not, just go through my videos. Make sure to subscribe and um, go through my playlist about foster parenting just to get all the tools that you can to become the most effective foster parent that you can be. And so yes, foster parenting, it requires grit. When I came into foster care, I was really, um, I'm still super tender hearted, but I was really um, shaken by a lot of things. I was really insecure. I didn't know who I was. I was really young. And so when I jumped into foster care, it required me to grab a hold of something that I didn't know that I had. There had to be a fight in me. There had to be a war for justice. There had to be a compassion and a passion and a level of forgiveness that I had never known before. I had to keep my eyes focused on love and what was right and what was good and what was just and what was truth because the reality is in in foster care, everything that is wrong with the world may come your way and it may try to shake you. It may try to have you question your identity or your purposes or what you felt like God was saying along this journey. But foster care, if you didn't have it already, it will give you grit. And when you come out, you will be stronger and you will be a radically different person than when you originally started. And that can be a really good thing.
The fifth thing that we have learned as foster parents for 14 years is that being a foster parent, it is a call. It's not just something you do on a whim or you think is a good idea. You do it because maybe someone that you know is doing it or you just feel bad for foster kids. Foster care is something that has to become almost this whisper or this nudge inside you. It's something that you have to weigh and question and really sit with before you know that you know that you are supposed to be a foster parent. At the same time, when you say yes, it can be the most radical adventure you have ever taken. It will lead you on a journey that you don't know if it's going right or left or up or down, and you will become someone that you never even imagined. It is a call. It requires you to lean on a God that's bigger than you. Lean on people. Lean on yourself in a way that you maybe have never done before. Those who come into foster care trying to be a savior or to rescue foster kids, they will fail. A lot of foster parents, in fact, I think it's 50%, quit within the first year because they maybe are doing it for the wrong purposes. Maybe they didn't have grit or maybe they weren't leaning on someone that's bigger than themselves. And so I encourage you, make sure that what you're doing is a call, that you're doing it for the right reasons. Foster care, it will shake everything that you are. It will shake your marriage. It will shake your family. Family. But at the end of the day, a call is something that can glorify God. It can be bigger than and more beautiful than if you were just to stand on the shore and to look at what's going on. You are actually getting in the game and you are making a difference. And that is a call worth saying yes to. The sixth truth about foster care is that it is the hardest, but the most rewarding thing that you will likely ever do in your life. Before I started foster care, you know, I had a great job. I was a teacher. I had gone back to college, got a degree. I had two biological kids. We had the cute little white house on a hill with a white picket fence. But there is something about foster care that when you lay your head on the pillow at night, you feel a peace and a contentment because you have sacrificed part of who you are and part of your life for the sake of someone else. It is a most fulfilling and wonderful feeling that you could imagine. Yes, it's hard. Yes, a lot of times I go to bed exhausted and my body's aching and I'm weary or I may be heartbroken or it's been a really hard day. But the truth is foster care is so fulfilling. You see so much beauty in these foster kids. You see God move in incredible ways when you step into foster care because the truth is God, he is the advocate for these children. He will fight for them in ways that you never could and you get a front row seat into the miracles of God when you say yes to foster care and that makes it all worth it. These are my final thoughts. A lot of times, especially as a Christians, we want to do great big things. We want to change the world. We want to leave a legacy and leave a lasting impact to those around us. And sadly, I know for me, a lot of times I try to do that in great big ways. But the truth is, if you bring a child into your home and you care for them and feed them and teach them and you love them as if they're part of your family, you are changing the world. It is a legacy that you will leave. There is a blessing that gets bestowed upon you because as you refresh others, you also will be refreshed. It's a front row seat into the miracle working power of a mighty and living God who loves these children more than you could know or you could imagine. Yes, it's hard. Yes, there's days that it feels lonely or it feels heartbroken. But the truth is foster care, it is worth it. It is worth giving up your life for because again, when you lay your head on the pillow at night, there is nothing more rewarding than you will ever do. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe below for more foster care videos just like this. And be sure to like it and share it with your friends. Remember, go out, live bold, and be brave.